So hello everyone, my name is Tommy and I'm part of the cross-chain collaboration team. Um, this uh, breakout room today, it's going to be very interactive. So feel free to interrupt me at any point. And we had a similar session earlier this week uh, with the inside sharing workshop with Catalyst School and that went pretty well. So I probably use pretty, pretty much the same slides and the same approach here because we don't have any of the same people so let's see okay i need to yeah okay so why are we here um the issue with blockchain is that it's so new and we are very passionate in whatever we do, and we easily get overly passionate about that one thing that we focus on. And that leads to tribalism and maximalism, and these are very harmful traits for collaboration. Um, for years, there was some talk about multi-chain future, but now we are there. It's obvious that it's a multi-chain future, and there's a lot of layer ones, layer zeros, whatnot. Um, to be able to operate in this environment, it's very important to have interoperability in the te technology, but also on your mind level to be interoperable. Um, so we need initiatives to increase the communication, coordination and collaboration between chains. And there are many common challenges that we could solve together. We don't have to be alone with those. We'll come back to those challenges soon, but I will stop here. Here are some ideas for projects to collaborate with. And I would like to hear from you guys, um, what type of projects do you already have in mind? Or are you active in some other chains or communities? Or what are you really curious about? So I'll just pass the ball for you, whoever wants, you can speak. I can certainly start. Um, I'm John, I'm from Wolfram Blockchain Labs. Um, realized I didn't introduce myself more. Um, so we actually work with a number of other blockchain communities. So let me see on here. Um, Filecoin we work with. Um, and then certainly we don't work with Ethereum Foundation, but we run an Ethereum node. We run a Bitcoin node. We run um, Bloxburg, which is a blockchain by Max Planck Society um, and a bunch of other nodes. Um, so our interest is likely from more of a, an Oracle perspective of, hey, we run these nodes. We can access these nodes and transactions and data and everything else. Um, maybe there's a way to experiment in terms of providing data from one chain um, to smart contracts running on Cardano. So that's kind of what we're thinking about at present, but maybe there are other things again, because we're, we're running nodes from, from other services. Mm, that's great. Awesome. Great to have you here. Who's next? I guess maybe I could just introduce myself. I'm Dan Kimball. Um, I've been uh, engaged in a major project on the um, Proton uh, blockchain. It's an EOSIO um, based platform. It's called FreeOS. Um, I would invite everybody to go and, and visit it just to understand what FreeOS is all about. But it is a, a community currency. And I'm deeply engaged in the design and development of community currencies and communities through DAOs. Um, because I think this is kind of the transformational element, the social transformational element that blockchain can bring to the world. So uh, we're also working um, actively with Definity. Our, our, um, while our um, currency, the FreeOS is running in the, in the uh, Proton uh, EOS IO uh, environment, um, the uh, front end of our uh, our DAP is running in Definity. Uh, we got a grant from Definity to um, to run um, the front end. Uh, well, eventually, I mean, Definity seems to be a place where there's a lot of activity or across um, around cross chain, and I'd like to hear other people's opinions about it. But 
we've been active in the Definity community um, doing a cross-chain Oracle um, uh, with Proton. Um, but I, I'm very much interested in trying to bring, you know, community currencies like FreeOS and um, our FreeDAO um, DAO environments uh, to cross-chain collaboration. And I see that um, and we're actively participating in doing it through Definity. Now, if, if you all are not familiar with Definity, I just might quite quickly introduce that it's really not a blockchain project in, in my perception. It's, um, it's basically an internet computer protocol, the ICP protocol that kind of disintermediates the ISP so that there really isn't, um, the, the, the value that I think Definity brings to us is really decentralizing the whole of the internet. I mean, basically you're working directly with data centers rather than through internet service providers or cloud service providers, even like, you know, Amazon, uh, these are, it, it provides a, a foundation that's really unstoppable. It's a, it's a much, um, it's a quite stable program. We're, we're using it very actively. And um, I see it as a, as a viable uh, alternative to cross-chain opportunities. They're, they're using bridges. I think this bridging idea is kind of clunky and, and difficult and, you know, very, um, non-uniform, but the Definity environment to me seems to be very um, uniform, a very, you know, fundamental way where we've got a kind of an underlying structure to do cross-chain um, uh, integration. Um, I, um, I, one more thing I might just say about that is that they have programs within Definity to try to bring blockchain um, operability to the Definity environment such that, for example, they've they're working on a project and I, they're close to completion on a project where they're integrating. The, 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 um, before you go too much integrating... into detail, just try to keep it a little bit on the overall over the challenge. We yeah, I'm almost done. Much I'm almost specific. done here. I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to go into much more uh, detail. I just wanted to say that the Definity platform is offering some cross-chain collaboration with Bitcoin, offering um, kind of um, blockchain. Um, a, a smart contracts to the to the Bitcoin um, uh, in, uh, in network. So that's all I had to say about it. And uh, welcome, Felix. I, I see you were missing. Felix, do you want to comment on the definitive? They are great people. <laughs> yeah, we have already some great connections to them, and they are very interested in general Cardano, but especially in Protein Catalyst as well. And they're really very keen to see, ah, okay, how could another ecosystem use Protein Catalyst processing systems as well for that? All right. Yeah, so in the interest of time, let's, let's keep the initial introductions a little bit shorter. Um, but anyone who wants to go next, just... Um, say hi and and what what brings you here and what are you excited about and if there's something on this slide or or outside of this slide that you are interested in in collaborating with hey uh i'm ivan i uh, i'm working on a cardano cosmos bridge uh, project uh currently in the plutus pioneers program uh third cohort um, so, uh, this, uh, whole, uh, technology space really fascinates me. I'm currently, uh, employed by a traditional uh, software vendor, uh, VMware, but I'm, I'm really, really interested and excited about this whole space. So, uh, I see this as a huge opportunity and, uh, I, I am inspired by the possibilities for, to, to enable collaboration between different blockchains. And I see Cosmos uh, is is a uh, really fast growing ecosystem, and I I don't see uh, current uh, progress in 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 collaborating with Cardano, which is also a, uh, a very quickly growing ecosystem. So I see this as a as an opportunity to uh, to come up with a, with a solution for this. So yeah, and uh, uh, thanks. Yeah, sure. Uh, Megan was commenting in the chat that uh, Polkadot and Cosmos are interesting because of their very, like it's in their very nature to be interoperable. And and that is 
both in Cosmos and in Polkadot, but I think they take a little bit different approaches to that, so we can learn from both. Anyone next? If there's no other points at this point, the goal is to create an enriching and open and safe environment. Um, so we really want to be pioneers in reaching out and starting to uh, create common ground where people can come together without any of these labels or, or thinking that this one is better than that. Um, we want it to be a safe environment where anyone can come and voice their opinions and um, learn from one another. So if we can find ways to share knowledge, resources, skills, ideas, and visions, then the entire block space, block, blockchain space becomes uh, stronger. So if you look from the societal level, uh, blockchain is still a drop in the ocean or crypto or Web3 or internet of value, whatever you want to call it. It's a, it's a tiny community of people in global comparison and we can't afford but collaborating. So the summary is that how might we create connections and collaboration between Cardano and other blockchains in the next six months? And why we say in the next six months is that we need to start seeing action. Um, this can be very little proposals. It can be something that initiates a collaboration between two chains. It can be one workshop. It can be a series of events, whatnot. Or it can be a massive multi-year project that you scale down to take the initial steps. But you need to show some actionable uh, progress for the next six months or six to nine months, let's say. Um, why is this important? Interoperability of blockchains and multi-chain awareness guarantees shared success of the crypto economy as a whole, as I mentioned. Uh, what does success look like? Collaborative value creation between project catalysts and other communities, and here technical and non-technical initiatives are welcome. Um, when we try to measure this cross-chain collaboration, uh, there might be other measures, but this is what we came up with um, as, a, as a team. So mainnet and testnet transaction volume growth, of course, um, that, that's kind of a lagging indicator. A uh, number of proposals, including participants from other blockchain communities. So feel free and be encouraged to reach out and bring other people from other chains to propose with you. Number of technical implementations connecting Cardano to other blockchains, ideas from other chains implemented by Catalyst. Um, and the other way around, if we have something cool, we can put it out there. Projects and dApps from other chains implemented on Cardano. So if it's Ethereum based, then go for the great migration challenge. But if it's anything else, feel free to do it here. Um, Catalyst created solutions adopted by other chains communities, a uh, number of events, workshop sessions, arranged with other communities, a uh, number of permanent initiatives with cross-chain teams, members from different blockchain communities working together. So obviously there can be many other uh, measures of success for your, for, for your individual uh, proposals, but here are some guidelines. Now, if we look at this from the proposal perspective, there's many ideas that, many directions that it could take. Um, the key point on this slide is the last one, any other ideas. So I'll go through these quickly and then I will stop and um, I would welcome you guys to, to bring your ideas here. So if you're thinking of proposing here um, and you are technically minded and you have some solutions in mind, um, Yes, it can be technical implementations to connect Cardano to other blockchains and vice versa. It can be SDKs, APIs, bridges, whatnot. Uh, 
It can be governance ideas from other chains implemented as part of the Voltaire roadmap, because governance is a big thing for everyone at the moment. It's not just cool to be DAO. It's, uh, it's something that is in the very nature of blockchains. And um, also uh, from legal perspective, it's important to be decentralized. And then if you are decentralized, you need to um, Okay, Danny says, try to record. I think we are recording. Yes, we are. Okay, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, so yeah, gov governance is, is not just like a fad. It's, it's something that has to be inbuilt into pretty much every chain. So we are dealing with that together. Um, already successful projects expanding from other chains to Cardano. Uh, expansions of Cardano-based projects into other chains, oracles, and other tools to interpret and inter interact with cross-chain data, for example, Wolfram. Um, Catalyst created solutions adopted by other chains and communities. Think tanks to address issues common to both or all chains involved. It can be bilateral, it, it can be multilateral. Collaboration. Uh, common research, education, outreach, and innovation projects with other chains and communities, for example, podcasts, hackathons, webinars, communication hubs, educational resources. So now the floor is yours. I'll shut up and let, let you guys take it from here. I would have a question. For example, to John from Wolfram. For example, let's say you joined the Cardano community and there is something like Project Catalyst. What would you envision? What is your first need to say how should active collaboration in the best case for you look like? This is for me? Yes. Sir. Okay. Um, hmm. Active collaboration. Uh, it's really interesting because for us, like, um, we have to get used to collaborating, I would say, maybe more than folks at Cardano. So we've tried, like Steph McCurdy is in, he, he tries to come um, every week since uh, the start of the year to town halls. And I think we both try to go to spaces and other stuff. And when appropriate, what we try to do is pull in our um, folks who work on our developer team as well. Um, to spaces and town halls and other events. Um, what we're going to try to do is more like one to many kind of things. So have like virtual seminars where then we can, like if people wanna come in and, and ask questions or potentially collaborate and do other things that, that we can do that as well. Um, but certainly it's a really, learn, it's a big learning process for us because it's not something on a typical, um, day-to-day week-to-week year-to-year sort of thing that we we do and i've worked at wolfram now for almost 11 years so over a decade so um it's it's easier i think for people like in the cardano community to kind of reach out to us than us to reach out to you because it's like you know i have my Here's my whole schedule. This is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I just put my head down and I, you know, do it. And so it's, for us, it's trying to get used to um, coming out to different things. I went to um, the IOH, IOHK Summit in Miami in 2019. I went to the summit in Wyoming in 2020. Um, I go out to other conferences as well. So I try to do go out to lots of different things and interact with with people we're going we just participated in the cnft awards we're we're in the process of doing like a wrap-up blog post there we're we're doing stuff at um south by southwest and we're going to try to reach out if, if anyone's going there to um to do stuff as well um so it's kind of moving from um just general interaction to interaction, interacting more specifically with um, the different communities that we that we work with and interact with. And so we're trying to, to do that. We will certainly have already made mistakes. We will continue to make mistakes. Um, so I'm not 
I'm very much different than maybe other people in that I will freely admit we'll make mistakes all the time. So just bear with us and we're, we're trying to, to figure out how to, to make it work. So I hope I answered your question. Almost. So <laughs> let's say, for example, okay, you're coming to Catalyst and say, okay, you're from Warform, you have your own experience already. And uh, by the way, beautiful speech. I fully second everything about you say for <laughs> ourselves, is right? But to say, oh, okay, you, you come into the space and now you see, okay, there is a challenge and we definitely want to support uh, and kick off initiatives in a collaborative mm -hmm. sense. What is your, on your wish list, if you imagine, what would happen out of this challenge to Wolfram? Where Wolfram say, wow, this is fucking amazing. And what would be the first steps you would like to, uh, you would envision for this? For example, is it a community initiative reaching out to you saying, hey guys, Let's go submit a proposal together. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit, it's a little bit harder for us to like to figure out how to work with people just because we're like, for instance, to sorry. <laughs> um we have our own like um our own process of doing things and our own like standards for doing things. Um, so that kind of makes that kind of collaboration a bit harder, but we're trying to figure out how to um, work with community things as well. So as it is now, like we have our own ideas that we're, where we're submitting proposals, but I could see in the future where people who um, come to us in advance, that we figure out how to participate with, with other people um, where we're bringing like something that we kind of already know exactly how we would participate and do something to someone else's proposal in the future. Um, and the best way to start that is just by asking us. <laughs> and, you know, the worst that could happen is we say, no, we can't do that. Um, or no, I can't figure out how to do that. And um, that's something I freely say no all the time to people. <laughs> um, but I encourage people to ask all the time. Because that's the only way that you'll you'll figure it you'll figure it out and we'll figure it out. Because if enough people ask and we realize there's demand for that, then that's how I change things internally to figure out how to make those things happen. Awesome, thank you. Was Eric with the hand up? Yeah, <clears throat> I want to ask a question. I, I see that we you know all of these other companies, but how are we reaching out to them? Well, how are we going to go about to actually get in contact with these guys? That's very easy. You ask. <laughs> so well, for, <clears throat> for, for example, LinkedIn is a very good tool. You tell what it's about. You say that you are part of the community and you would like to talk with them. <laughs> That's it. Example, one example, Eric, I just jumped a half a year ago on the polka at this front and just spammed all the admins there and said, hey. <laughs> I'm from Carolina. Hope you excuse me. And it worked. Yeah, well, I, I've been trying this whole week. After the last week, we talked about this. Then I've been trying <clears throat> looking into all these the other projects and then see who 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 is kind of in charge of that portion and then see how you can contact them. But uh, even, even on LinkedIn, when you send something to them, they they might not answer because they don't know who I am. That's part of the learning, how to present yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, I can give you some tips, maybe one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, yeah, I'm open. I mean, I, I'm I'm not a programmer like you know, like you guys, and I. I so I'm I'm yeah. I'm not the programmer either. <laughs> I'm a business guy. <laughs> yeah. So, so my strength, I guess, is that because I'm I'm holding classes and or, or, or you know and and do podcasts and st stuff like that just to spread this out, and so but I I totally understand that this this collaboration between or cross chain stuff is super super important. Uh, I I say th I think actually I, I want to go as far as saying that you know the survival of blockchain in the wild world it, it depends on this. We need to be able to cross pla cross uh, chain platform work together. So, 
anyway, but yeah, Tommy, if you have some good ideas, I'm, I'm listening. Uh, if you don't mind posting your um, Discord again, I'll, I'll add you right away. Yeah, all the contact info, it's in the town hall slide, so you can get it from there, but I can put it in the chat also. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, hey. Imran, go for it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I wasn't sure if someone was speaking. I thought maybe someone was speaking with the voice was a bit unclear. Um, anyways, yeah, I just have one uh, clarification. I, it, this like common challenges, like this, tra this challenge track, it's uh, different from interoperability, right? Like interoperability, cross-chain interoperability is completely separate. This is about common concerns, like points of confluence in terms of interest and incentive for different ecosystems on the blockchain, yeah. right? Yeah, maybe you joined later. Um, so basically, we haven't got to this slide yet. Uh, this is I see. challenges in the space, like problems in the space. Uh, okay. Nothing to do with uh, catalyst challenges. I just realized that there's a double meaning for the word. Um, right, okay, maybe I should yeah. actually talk about this slide. So basically, Web3 is the concept that people have started talking about. And... Uh, by the way, if someone is not muted, maybe you can mute yourself. There's some background noise coming from somewhere. Um, yeah, so some call it Web3, some call it Internet of Value, some call it this and that. Uh, but the common denominator is that we're no longer in that space where everything is owned by large corp corporations and you have to give your data to them to use their ser services and whatnot. Uh, but we are going into this decentralized world. Um, so the common name for that is Web3. Um, so what are some of the challenges that everyone is facing? Um, as said before, it's still drop in the ocean. So awareness is definitely one of the things that we need to spread as an, as an industry, um, as a larger crypto community, because people like like the com common people they think that uh, crypto is something dangerous or illegal or 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 something to shy away from and they don't understand that if we are successful in this then everyone will be using web3 services in time to come uh, without even realizing it so this understanding needs to be there um, everyone has organization and governance issues everyone is uh, grappling with these same pain points that we are. Um, so we might as well help each other out. Culture, diversity, inclusion is very important because we are all in a very innovative knowledge uh, centered um, platform where we need to hear different viewpoints. We can't be group thinking everything alike. So if we want to have better inno innovation, we need to have diversity. And if we want to have diversity, we need to have an inclusive culture. Um, innovation decision making is very, very much in the core of all these DAOs and, and, and decentralized organizations. So uh, everyone has that challenge. How do we provide collaboration tools and platforms for this kind of work? Uh, how do we incentivize participation? How do we do things uh, cost effectively? And how do we reach the, we call it return on, on intention and some other people call it return on investment. Um, but basically, how do we have the maximum impact with, with minimum costs? Then regulation and compliance, it's a double-sided coin. The one side is that, yeah, if we don't, if we are, not compliant, then we might have issues. But even more important is that if we have common regulation, if we have rules that are, are easily understood, then we can invite many more investors, many more uh, players in this area. So clear regulation really helps in that. And then finally, uh, if you are in, in crypto, you know that security and privacy are pretty important issues in any chain. And so far, we haven't had huge incidents in, in 
Cardano, but I'm sure they will come um, when things start growing. So this is kind of the overlook of how the industry looks like and what, what is what is common for everyone. And there's many other things that you can come up with. But if you need to start talking with some other chain or their community, for example, you can show them this slide and you can ask, what are you really good at? What can we learn from you? Or you can ask, what are your pain points? Where could we find solutions together? Or say that we have this thing called Catalyst and we have this and this and this strength that we could share with you. So those are the approaches that you can take if you, if you approach another community. Eric, does this help you forward? I need to unmute, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I, I totally agree with all of these things. Yeah, uh, the, the thing that I've been having a little bit more problem is that, you know, when, when you, let's say that we go into Polkadot, who there do we actually talk to? So, I mean, you can't just approach them nilly-willy. <clears throat> that, that's, that's been my thing. Uh, actually, I, I contacted Dan earlier this week because um, uh, I, I have been doing some research for a friend of mine <clears throat> that she wants to put all her stuff on um, the XRP ledger. And so I started listening in to David Schwartz's speeches and all that kind of stuff. And one of the latest speeches he had, he actually addressed this problem. And he's, you know, and, and he said, this is something we are working on. And that, so to me, it was like, oh, well, maybe we should contact him. And so I went on LinkedIn and tried to see, but you know, it's, you, you hit a wall right there. Why, why would he want to talk to me? So you know, if you have ideas or anybody has ideas, how, how do we go about to contact the people that should be contacted in these groups? I'm, I'm all ears. I mean. Uh, Felix, do you have any tips? Best is really, uh, what was addressed before already? Try to present not yourself, but the reason for which you reach out right already it's not you who is going to our faults mm. right to keep this already away you are trying to represent something to somebody else well that's what mm. i was trying to do mm. uh, but you can't you can't just come in and say uh, so hey i i want to do this you have to say hey my name is and i represent this so you know it's a double-edged sword a little bit there so but, exactly. uh, Experience. yeah and i i think one of the like key factors in that is that it's super easy when you're already like knowledgeable or if you if you're a fan of some other chain and you are already using services there you using dapps there you are part of those communities then it's much easier to contact those people and ask them to come to catalyst also um so i know it's it's difficult if you just cold call people and they get so many messages every day so so maybe they will not respond at once but i'm pretty sure that when the 11th person from catalyst contacts them they start listening yeah, but yeah but, I but feel there's, pain. there's also a problem with with linkedin and places like that is that uh you know let's say oh i'm going to contact charles hoskinson on LinkedIn, and it ends up being a guy in nigeria hmm. yeah and it doesn't have to be charles hoskinson it like like the the good part is that we are decentralized communities, so we can pretty much get in touch with anyone in those communities, and then we can ask who would be the correct people to talk to. So it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't have to be some central organization. Like, yeah, when, that's when actually go, the pro yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. When you go, for example, let's say Polkadot, for example, or to anybody, at very first, you inform yourself already, right? And then you yes. see, ah, in Polkadot, they have something like the Polkadot Council. And then you can go with a serious question where you say, hey, how can I reach out to the Polkadot Council? That you will directly get forwarded already. Because one thing what is kind of similar on a lot of, in a lot of the DLT blockchain communities is the community is very vibrant and participative anyway. And they know about the ecosystem in their community. And they're quite open to forward you to the right people. Just give it a try, start it. 
makes her yeah. first experiences and learn from it. When it when it comes to polka that we have already started contacting, so you can talk with Felix more about that, and and uh, we will have some some news soon. Um, so that that's another point that if you guys are already talking to them, then why why if I then come in and bother them again? It's it's you know, and it's a little bit like uh, you know five notes five. You know, I, I know five people, and out of that, you Tommy is one, and Tommy knows another five. So yeah. uh, th there needs to be a little bit of a one thing that I was thinking about was because I am a little bit involved in 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 podcasting and stuff like that was maybe maybe angling in such a way that in the in one of the casts we talk about cross chains how important that is and then say that hey we are now working on something and please contact us if you're interested so maybe going through a media way is also a good way that's a really good point and you can build a proposal out of that also you can maybe test it out once or twice and then you can build a proposal out of it well, I saw they have a video group here, and I was actually thinking about maybe contacting them because then you can, uh, you, you know, you can do, uh, smash two, two, two birds in one stone that you, you get involved with that. But also in that portion, you can get things like this out. So that was my thought. But yeah, uh, that's a good point that we have what 23 different challenges. So you can be cross chain in other challenges also. Like, for example, the what is that? The le 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 there's the legal and lobbying part like that's some that's a common challenge for everyone for regulation compliance so you could suggest something there also um today i was in touch with someone who is probably going to be partnering with us i don't want to announce anything before i know what comes out of that but um it was interesting because i was first thinking this cross-chain angle and this is what I presented first, and that's how I got to talking. But then we started talking about other things that are related to their business, which we also have challenges for. And then it turned out that they are most interested in gamers on chain because that's where they could apply their technology. And I was like, okay, I would have never thought about that. <laughs> so it can be that you start collaborating with some company in some some other chain and then it turns out that their solutions and their networks would be appli applicable for many challenges so it doesn't you don't have to be limited to this only um, anyone else any ideas points about these topics or shall we move forward just a thought for, for thoughts here um I believe we already have the technology. Why don't we use the same ideas as DNS, where uh, pretty much every domain name is accountable for their own zones and IP address? I, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure the technology is there, and it's just if if inter interoperability is the concern of all nodes. Why can't we have our own protocol where, um, I don't know, where if anybody wants to cross chains with Cardano, they can just participate by, I'm not sure if there's an SDK or, or I'm not sure if I'm far fetched on this uh, particular topic, but I'm just thinking ahead where, you know, it's similar to a DNS. Uh, uh, ideas just just for I'm not sure if uh, you know this is like kind of similar situation for uh, this kind of issue or you know goal that we're trying to achieve. I'm not sure if that <laughs> any thoughts for that. Yeah, I'm waiting for someone to comment. I didn't entirely understand what you meant by that, to be honest. Could like, you explain it a little better? I, I, I guess the point was to have like uh, a common layer of interoperability where different chains could tap into, right? Correct. Mm. What would that layer constitute? Like, what exactly are we having be interoperable here? <laughs> Maybe that would be Polkadot then, and everyone could tap into that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just you know, just always some, you know, just 
similar, it's all kind of similar technology. So, you know, that we can probably get the idea from, you know, if you own a, you if you own a domain name, you can just register that, you know, you have your own uh, record of DNS by, you know, just registering to our registrar and, you know, put your uh, channel to, or to that, Particular chain to to join. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that is you know something. Yeah. So if there is something to it, you post this idea in Idea Scale and you see if people start commenting. If if yes, you make a proposal out of it, then people will start giving feedback. You invite more perspective, and off you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to make a point that um, we we hear a lot uh, from uh, IOG, from Charles himself, uh, that Cardano has this wonderful design uh, that is actually meant for cross-chain uh, interoperability. Uh, side chains, we hear about this all the time, but uh, something uh, as simple as a good documentation that would explain to people how uh, these things are supposed to work, how exactly uh, one comes up with a cross chain, with, with a side chain for Cardano, uh, that would uh, tremendously help, I think, in this space. Mm. Um, uh, so uh, Cosmos, for example, has their uh, protocol, interoperability, interoperability protocol uh, uh, completely described. Uh, and, and like anyone can come in and, and look at at the design and at the specification and, and implement this thing. Uh, they even have a, an SDK, uh, how to even uh, create your own blockchain uh, based on IBC. Uh, so perhaps something like this would, uh, for Cardano uh, could help. Uh, and and it's, it's pretty hard to, for someone that is not already in Cardano, in, in like very deep technically in, in, uh, in the implementation, uh, to to describe this thing like we can we can announce the challenge okay let's let's write some documentation for this but uh it's only folks who are already in here uh in iog for example could could do that uh so how can we how can we reach into iog and ask them uh, hey folks why don't why don't you guys uh uh develop some documentation Yes, do we really want to go to the entities? Because mm. I think in regard when it comes now to cross-chain collaboration and everything, I think a common thing what you have across many DLT ecosystems is there's a problem in transition of power. We have very first the entities who built a community, who built the very first ecosystem in which then a community grew. And they became by default the custodians of the ecosystem. And now all of these uh, entities, they have the problem, okay, how does effective transition of power look like, where the entity is able to handle over all important things, what, what matter to the community themselves. When we go now in cross-chain collaboration and we move already the entities within, then we will have the problem that entities will start to speak be, uh, between them, but entities do very often, not in public spaces, not on a transparent way. Maybe to say, how can we avoid as much as possible that the entity even has the possibility to join? Because it's a 100 percent led community initiative, which supports all the included entities by handling over whatever might come there to the community as they are the initiators. Let's say each in entity who is involved, I would say, Fuck you when we invite you. Yes, but <laughs> if not, that's not your job what we have to do here. Mm. Yeah, overall, I think the space is, uh, for now, it's, uh, um, I, I recently, I the, the, there was a, the, it was an inaccurate article, but a lot of people were saying that Vitalik recently said that he would really welcome a bear market because that's when the real, like, you know, good stuff will happen. 
uh, it wasn't exactly the the quote itself wasn't exactly accurate but i i i do understand uh, people who feel that way because right now um as i see it like there's not a lot of incentive for a thing for 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 organizations and entities to do things right because even if they aren't very inefficient they're not penalized for it because there's so much hype there's so much room for growth in like efficient and good mechanisms aren't even being rewarded at the moment because because of how uh, much growth there is in the sector so yeah i can understand how uh, yeah i would i would also be looking forward for a bear market somewhat because then you know good in good mechanisms uh, are what would keep communities afloat at that point but it's it's it's, it's also important to you know build good mechanisms before that because when that happens it will already be too late to implement those mechanisms and then at that point communities that have been surviving on um the environment so, sort of environment that exists at the moment won't survive so yeah i i completely understand with what you understand the importance of these issues specifically the sort of things that you're talking about like um how you uh, ensure that there's there's good transition of power and there's good mechanisms to ensure that the best entities are able to actually uh, influence things hey um our third team member philip also joined do you want to say something regarding these things um, yeah i was listening for for a while now um i loved hearing the idea of ivan about his cosmos bridge I'm really looking forward to see the technical technical side of this, but yeah, I'm just listening. You know, it's it's a big big deal. It's a big uh, you know. Com there is a lot of common challenges that we all face with different blockchains, and I hope I really really do hope that this is a first small but important step to something potentially huge. I hope. Yeah, I I think the. Cosmos is so important ecosystem for the whole space that um, maybe one proposal is not enough. So, Ivan, maybe you want to lead some sort of discussion later specifically about Cosmos that maybe we have more ideas around that. Yeah, I, I would love to. Uh, so, so for now, I'm I'm still learning. I'm uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm learning Plutus uh, uh, in in Plutus Pioneers program. Uh, uh, so to really uh, begin to understand uh, how one would go around and, and design uh, this technical solution and then implement it. Uh, so, uh, and and I'm really actually forced into into uh, uh, learning this via the Plutus Pioneers program because uh, really, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, there's no good documentation as to how actually uh, what what Plutus smart contracts uh, look like. Uh, so it's it's only currently available as as this uh, uh, online course. Uh, so compared to what other chains have, like Ethereum, it's uh, it's a much worse situation. But uh, well, hey, we we, we got to deal with with what we have. So uh, I'm I'm taking these steps right now. Um, of course, when when we have more information, uh, when I have more information, I, I will I'll try to share. Uh, I'll I'll come up with a design document and and uh, publish it, and we'll we'll discuss uh, how it's, how it's going to work. Um, yeah. So so, but um, really, what I would love to see is uh, any good technical documentation of uh, from from the current designers of, of the Cardano uh, protocols, uh, how uh, side chains could, could be designed, how, how they, they could be implemented. Um, of course, uh, yeah, the, the, any, any good documentation, like, or any documentation about uh, uh, how, how to uh, create your uh, smart contracts on Cardano, well, uh, uh, so th these th these these tools are crucial. Uh, in my Ivan, opinion. did you did you maybe see did you maybe see Plutonomicon by M Labs? Uh, no, unfortunately. Uh, if you could share a link, I would be grateful. I I will I will okay sorry yeah thank you. 
Yeah, one, one, cha one challenge is that it sucks to be a pioneer and some of those things are not documented yet, but the other challenge is that information is all over the place. <laughs> it's not always easy to find. Oh yeah, information is there, uh, absolutely. It's, it's just uh, decentralized though, like distributed. Yeah, uh, thanks for the link, Philip. Okay, um, it's it's really late here. Uh, it's almost 11 soon, so um, I'll need to move forward with the slides and uh, we'll wrap up the official section. And then if you guys want to stay and, and banter afterwards and sh share some ideas, you can. Um, but I'd like to bring the community advisor perspective into this discussion, because if you are proposing, you need to know how you will be judged. <laughs> and if you want to be a CA, then you probably want to know this too. Um, so it's very important that now when we are dealing with not only Catalyst people and not only Cardano people, but we will be uh, dealing with many other people from other chains, hopefully, um we need to be quite welcoming we need to be a little bit more patient we need to hold hands <laughs> and we need to explain certain things how how things work here and it will also make certain things even more obvious that what is not working in catalyst because <laughs> we we will need to explain it to someone who is who is coming from outside so make the newcomers feel welcome and introduce them to the collaborative culture of Catalyst because that's our strength. Um, and it really pays off if you familiarize yourself with the proposals if you are a CA and, and try to understand uh, where are they coming from. And if it seems like it's overly technical for you or if it's, if it's completely different technology that you're used to, then let those people who know uh, deal with it. Another challenge is that, uh, especially in the Ethereum, um, the in the Great Migration Challenge, that we will need to have CAs who are able to understand <laughs> uh, both Solidity and a bit of Pluto. So there's not too many people like that. So, so um, maybe like twenty in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I would I would say that what what we mentioned in the beginning that uh, both technical and non technical proposals are welcome. So this is the first time we are doing this, and there will be the next time if we do this well. So let's now get things started. Let's start getting people in, and then in Fund Nine when we do this again, we are we we have a steady basis. Uh, both when it comes to ideas and knowledge and resources, but we also have people to to do the proposals, to help each other out, and, and also to do the assessments. Um, Philip, do you want to say a few words about this? Or um, Yeah, um, you know, I... Like I said last time, when we when we held this, uh, just try to if you're like a Cardano CA and maybe you you're a CA for a couple of funds now, try to keep an open mind. You know we all have biases towards our favorite chain and towards other chains, and you know we we may like some and we may dislike some, but that's not you know the reason to automatically disregard or or you know not give a fair chance to the project right let's let's be kind and uh, you know give a fair chance to everyone i try to try to learn as much as you can about the you know the the, the accompanying chain try to improve yourself try to you know increase your knowledge try to increase the knowledge of the proposers try to make a very welcoming you know society for this for these people because CAs are probably going to be 
the strongest ambassadors in this in this particular point, especially for proposers. Right. So if you give a bad rating, please, you know, um, uh, justify it. Give you know concrete feedback, well-intentioned feedback. Explain why you gave two stars or one star. You know, try to be as kind as you can. I have not Philip will come as VCI and filter out all your assessment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Felix, Philip, do you want to continue or shall I? So the impact part. Uh, so there's, there's no. That is horrible. Okay, there's no difference between this challenge and all the others. So the impact audit, auditability and feasibility are also. Uh, key factors here. There might be certain nuanced differences though. Um, so here in the impact, you need to uh, pay close attention to, does this really answer the, the challenge goal? Is it about increasing collaboration, coordination, and communication, or is it something else? Uh, this can be increased with a technical solution, or it can be increased with a non-technical solution. Um, so is the problem clear? Is the solution clear? Um, are the metrics clear, goals outlined? Um, and will this be able to scale um, to address future challenges? Because as we mentioned, we need to deliver results in this fund, but then it can be scaled up if it works. The feasibility part, how likely is it that the team is able to successfully implement the proposal? So other, otherwise, it's the same stuff as for any other um, proposal, but especially the cross-chain aspect comes here, like those teams that have people from different um, chains, they will have an edge. So if you have only like Cardano people trying to solve everyone else's problems, then that might not be working. So you need to be a little bit cognizant of what does this, uh, what does this proposal require when it comes to skills, knowledge, all those things. And does this team really have those or do they have a plan how to get those? And if they do, then it's, then it's okay. Then the auditability is the information enough to audit progress and success of the proposal. What can the community expect? So this is pretty standard stuff, roadmap, metrics, KPIs, uh, understandable description of the problem and the solution. Anything to add here, guys? I think you said it pretty well, Tommy. Um, we basically want something, something direct, something that we can, you know, prove that it creates a positive impact with Cardano. In a perfect world, it would make a positive impact for the neighboring chain as well. That would be the best proposals. But if we can somehow create a culture that reduces the hate, that reduces the ma maximalism, where we just treat each other like colleagues, and not like, you know, enemies. Um, I would be personally very proud of that. Uh, Tommy, do you have the link to the slide deck? Yeah, yeah, I will share it later. Felix, any last words? Just second everything what you said. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it was exhaustive presentation. Uh, right. I just have. A quick question. Uh, uh, Tommy, I tried to add you to my Discord and it says that you don't accept friends. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know why. I, I'm from Finland. <laughs> it, takes had, uh, it, it takes 20 years. Well, this is how I, it starts already in Cardano itself. <laughs> cross chain collaboration, first outreach from the presenter challenge team. No, no. Uh, Tommy, I'm actually your, I, I, I'm your neighbor. I'm yeah. from Sweden. Yeah, yeah. Then, it's take, then it takes 40 years. <laughs> okay, okay. 
Okay. I'm just gonna show you. You can pick <laughs> one of these. Right. Okay. So, on that note, I will stop the recording, and then we can start the more informal banter. So, thank okay. you, everyone, and um, see you soon.